Good day everyone. It is nice to see you again. Welcome to our any learning as our learning community. Lesson 1. Principles of Disaster Nursing. Disaster Nursing. The possibility and reality of mass casualties associated with disasters, terrorism, and biological warfare are not new to human history, nor is the concept of using weapons of mass destruction. As distressing as terrorism and warfare are, they are just two of them and made reasons that healthcare providers need to plan for mass casualties. Airplane crashes, train crashes, and toxic substance spillages are other man-made disasters that can result in casualties and tax the resources of healthcare facilities and their communities. In addition to man-made disasters, natural phenomena such as floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, fires, and earthquakes kill and injure hundreds of thousands of people worldwide each year. The acute care facility must be prepared for any and all of these disasters. Let's define all the following terms for you to understand the topics under the principles of disaster nursing. Disaster is any situation, natural or man-made that produces an immediate patient load greater than the normal emergency department can handle. The World Health Organization defines a disaster as a disaster is an occurrence disrupting the normal conditions of existence and causing a level of suffering that exceeds the capacity of adjustment of the affected community. Another definition of WHO, which states that a disaster is a term describing an event that can be defined spatially and geographically, but that demands observation to produce evidence. It implies the interaction of an external stressor with a human community, and it carries the implicit concept of non-manageability. The term is used in the entire range of risk reduction activities, but it is possibly the least appropriate for response. According to International Strategy for Disaster Reduction, disaster is a serious disruption of the functioning of a community or a society causing widespread human, material, economic or environmental losses which exceed the ability of the affected community or society to cope using its own resources. And according to Center for Research on the Epidemiology of Disasters, a disaster is a situation or event which overwhelms local capacity, necessitating a request to national or international level for external assistance. Hazard. A natural or human-made event that threatens to adversely affects human life, property, or activity to the extent of causing a disaster. Vulnerability. The predisposition to suffer damage due to external events. Susceptibility. The proneness of a community to be exposed to danger. And resilience. The adaptability. Capacity to recover. Risk assessment. The overall process of hazard identification, risk analysis, and risk evaluation. Hazard identification. The process of finding, listing, and characterizing hazards. Risk analysis. A process for comprehending the nature of hazards and determining the level of risk. Risk evaluation. The process of comparing an estimated risk against given risk criteria to determine the significance of the risk. Risk control. Actions implementing risk evaluation decisions. Categories of disaster. We have three categories of disaster, namely, 1. Class A, 2. Class B, and 3. Class C. 1. Class A, all require response by hospital disaster team, or in short it has a bigger impact. Examples are the following. Natural disasters, earthquakes, floods, and tornadoes. External disasters slash medical emergencies, chemical exposure, epidemic of disease, and nuclear fallout. 2. Class B. Internal disasters slash medical emergencies that may require response by hospital disaster team or specially created crisis team. Examples are the following. Death of key personnel, pope, president, large-scale poisoning, death of religious personnel. And 3. Class C. 
internal disaster slash non-medical emergencies may require response by hospital disaster team or specially created crisis team. Examples are the following. Bomb threats, strikes, criminal activity, rape, kidnapping, shooting. Disaster levels. Disasters are often classified by the resultant anticipated necessary response as follows. 1. Level 1. 2. Level 2. And 3. Level 3. Level 1. Local emergency response personnel and organizations can contain and effectively manage the disaster and its aftermath. Level 2. Regional efforts and aid from surrounding communities are sufficient to manage the effects of the disaster. Level 3. Local and regional assets are overwhelmed, statewide or federal assistance is required. Stages of a disaster. The stages of disaster are as follows. 1. Pre-impact slash preparedness. 2. Impact slash response. And 3. Post-impact slash recovery. 1. Pre-impact slash preparedness. Occurs prior to the onset of the disaster. Not all type of disasters has the pre-impact phase. 2. Impact slash response. Disaster occurs, continuing to immediately following disaster, usually brief or lasting to few hours. Inventory and rescue period. Assessment of the extent of the losses, planning on how to use the resources left, and how to rescue the victims. And 3. Post-impact slash recovery. Majority of rescue operations. Remedy and recovery period. Lengthy phase and may last 4 years, wherein the survivors may feel the following. Honeymoon phase feelings of euphoria. Disillusionment anger. Disappointment. Reconstruction phase acceptance of loss. Coping stress. Rebuilding. Goals of disaster management. According to Warfield, 2015, he outlines the goals of disaster management as follows. 1. Reduce, or avoid, losses from hazards. 2. Assure prompt assistance to victims. And 3. Achieve rapid and effective recovery. Disaster management. There are four disaster management phases to achieve the goals of disaster management, namely 1. Mitigation 2. Preparedness 3. Response and 4. Recovery The length of each phase greatly depends on the severity of the disaster. 1. Mitigation Reducing the effects of disaster Mitigation occurs when actions are taken that eliminate or reduce the chance of a disaster happening, or reduce the effects of an unavoidable disaster. Information such as countermeasures and emergency risk are critical for mitigation to be successful. Appropriate building codes, vulnerability analyzes and public education all contribute to mitigation. 2. Preparedness. Preparing and planning a response in advance. Preparedness is having a comprehensive disaster plan in place that coordinates the efforts of public and private organizations. Each organization has specific roles and is able to mobilize quickly and effectively. This level of readiness enables a community to respond to any emergency situation. 3. Response. Putting the plans into action so that hazards are minimized and the needs of the victims met. Response to disasters happens in the emergency stage and after the disaster event has occurred. The purpose of the emergency response is to act to maintain life, maintain health and evaluate, and respond to the psychological needs of the affected community. And 4. Recovery. Restoration of the community to a pre-disaster functional level. Recovery is the final phase, and, as the word implies, it is the period when the emergency is under control and the community starts to rebuild. There is no set period for the recovery phase. This phase depends on the type of disaster. It can take years for a community to recover. Some never return to their pre-disaster state. Disaster plan. 
a predefined set of instructions for a community's emergency responders. Features of a good disaster plan are as follows. 1. Written. 2. Well publicized. 3. Realistic. And 4. Rehearsed. Key components of disaster plan. 1. Patient care. As nurses, you should know the following to cater patients effectively and efficiently. System on how to receive and distribute patients, whether incoming slash evacuated patients. Triage procedure. Provides care for the greatest number. Not applicable in non-disaster triage. Avoid treating ambulatory patients as dependent patients. Pre-assignment with regard to responsibility. 2. Communication. A good communication with as follows, internal, within personnel, and external, one hospital facility to another. 3. Resources staff. Disaster team must know how to contact the resource staff. 4. Security slash safety. This is to ensure that the scene is safe. 5. Coordination with public agencies. 6. Documentation. 7. Public relations officials. 8. Critical incident stress debriefing. Remember that this is not a form of psychotherapy. This is done to mitigate, lessen, the occurrences of post-traumatic stress disorder. This is usually done in group process involving persons who are victims slash survivors of an overwhelming event or trauma including those who may have been impacted by the trauma. It aims to prevent the subsequent development of PTSD. And it provides avenue for the patient to express feelings, coping mechanisms, and lessons learned. Disaster Management Principles As nurses, the disaster management principle serves as a guide in the implementation of disaster management as follows. 1. Prevent occurrence. 2. Minimize casualties. 3. Prevent further casualties. 4. Rescue the injured. 5. Provide first aid. 6. Evaluate the injury. 7. Provide definitive care. And 8. Facilitate reconstruction and recovery. The responsibility of nursing care vary, depends on situation or available resources. May include triage, patient care, equipment, directing others, recording, and transportation. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, and be safe. Agyamanak.